Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Eli the Obity Tech. I'm here working on this 2012 Kia Optima 2.4 liter GDI engine. Pretty much the concern here is that the uh, that the vehicle tends to have a either long crank or crank don't start at moments, so it's intermittently. Little history is that supposedly three months ago he had the high fuel pressure pump replaced. He also replaced the fuel pressure sensor. But I asked him what was the main problem, was it the fuel pressure sensor or the high fuel pump? He said that the, it was actually the high fuel pump that was pretty much the cause of his, of his uh, crank no starts and a P0172. In other words, he, he mentioned that it was actually internally leaking and it, it was actually dumping fuel inside the crankcase which was causing that P0172. So then I asked him, was the fuel, the high fuel pressure pump replaced with the original? He said yes. And he actually does have the, the old fuel, the high fuel pressure pump. So I'll show you guys in a little bit. And then I told, and then I also asked him, was the uh, fuel pressure sensor replaced as an original or aftermarket? He said that that's the only one that was actually replaced it as aftermarket due to uh, budget reasons so do we have perhaps a, a similar problem again maybe a bad aftermarket fuel pressure sensor or a faulty high fuel pressure sensor I don't know so here we go I got the scan tool already hooked up I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys supposedly the uh, check engine light is on so I'm going to check for codes real quick. So you can see he has a P0420 as current code. He has a P0087 fuel rail system pressure to low bank one. And then he has a P0193 fuel rail pressure sensor circuit high bank one. And a P0036 heater control circuit bank one sensor two. Okay, so, so he has four current codes. I'm going to concentrate on the P0087 and P0193 since he's having no crank, I mean a crank no start or long crank conditions. So now the next step to this, before even cranking the engine, I'm going to go ahead and check live data. I'm going to go ahead and check for fuel level. And fuel rail, fuel rail pressure sensor data. So here we go. So the vehicle does have fuel inside the tank, so that's good. It shows about 40, almost 42% of gas in the tank. And then fuel rail pressure, absolute, showing about zero PSI, which is no good. So that pretty much tells me that perhaps this aftermarket fuel pressure sensor is no good. That's the downside about going aftermarket instead of original. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key, I mean the start button off and turn it back on and have the fuel pump, the low side fuel pump pressurize the system and let's see if this all right, if this uh, zero psi becomes All right, so you know, so it threw me, you know, so it threw me off. You know, let me do it again. Still shows zero. I'm gonna turn it off real quick. Back on. The, I, you know, I heard the the low side fuel pump actually prime, and it still shows zero psi. So, do we have a problem with the fuel rail pressure sensor? Perhaps the sensor is no good, or do we have grounds or power issue? Or a signal issue to the computer I'm not sure so let me go ahead and start the engine real quick for you guys that yeah, was a little bit of a little long crank but not too bad vehicle did start but it still shows zero PSI with the vehicle idling 
Okay, so I do smell that that raw fuel from the tailpipe. Let me go ahead and show you guys the, the tailpipe. As you can see, there's that little carbon residue on the tailpipe. Whereas the vehicle's running too lean, adding too much fuel. Since we have that low fuel pressure code. Let me go ahead and check um, fuel trims. Actually, the uh, computer is actually taking away, I mean, short term is actually taking away fuel, but long term is between 18 to 21 percent. So, the computer, the long term is adding, short term is taking away fuel due to this zero psi condition here on the fuel rail pressure sensor that was supposed to be placed three months ago with an aftermarket. So, I guess the next step is just, to, you know, is just to go ahead. And remove the um, the intake manifold. Why? Because the fuel pressure, the fuel rail pressure sensor does lift below the intake manifold. So to do powers, powers and grounds, or to replace it, you have to remove the intake manifold. So I guess that's going to be the next step here, guys, to confirm powers and grounds and signal. All right, all right, guys. So real quick. I'm here actually showing you guys as a customer this day that he did keep the old parts. This is the old high pressure fuel pump. As I mentioned, supposedly this fuel pump was actually leaking internally, which was causing fuel to be dumped into the crankcase, which was causing a P0172 system to rich. This is the part number. He actually bought a Hyundai part number high pressure fuel pump which is still compatible with the Kia Optima this this is of a Hyundai Sonata which is pretty much the same uh, same engine both are Korean cars so there's no problem with that and this is the aftermarket part number of the fuel pressure sensor as you can see it's made in China perhaps that's the reason why he's having problems now with those two codes P0087 and P0193 this is the old part right here, the old fuel pressure sensor. He did mention that this was actually working fine. The, the, the problem was only this, but the mechanic who replaced the high fuel pressure pump, he told him that it was recommended to replace both of them at the same time. So since he was in a budget crisis, he only bought the or, original high pressure pump, but aftermarket fuel pressure sensor. So. Sometimes it's tough to re replace everything with uh, original parts. So like I said, to, re to check the fuel pressure sensor, I must remove the intake manifold, which is no big deal. So that'll be the next step. All right. All right guys, so with the intake manifold removed, as you can see, this is the location of the fuel rail pressure sensor for this Kia Optima 2.4. It is it is brand new with the aftermarket. Okay, so so pretty much I've already back pro the first wire, which is on your right, which is a red wire. That's going to be a 5 volt reference, which is showing currently 4.95, which is good. The next step is to go ahead and check for ground, which is a black wire on your left side, which is I'll say the third wire to your left. And this one should be less than 0.1 or less than 100 millivolts which is showing pretty much 9 millivolts you know let me put it into the millivolt scale so, so like i said it's showing about 9 millivolts which is good less than 100 millivolts so, so that's a good ground the next step is to go ahead and back probe the the signal wire So the signal wire, which is a, I believe a white wire or a tan wire, but it's the middle wire, it's showing about 95 millivolts. 
I'm not really sure if that's a correct spec for this vehicle just with the key on engine on or with no pressure in the system since I can't really crank the engine over actually I can't crank the engine over I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, remove the ignition coil fuse and crank the engine over so that the vehicle doesn't start so let me go ahead and do that and I'll show you alright guys so I went ahead and removed the, the 20 amp fuse for the ignition coil and then the 10 amp injector fuse this is a 10 amp fuse location and the 20 amp fuse ignition coil injector you know I'm gonna go ahead and crank the engine over without the vehicle starting and let's see if this uh, 95 millivolts actually goes higher than that as uh, pressure builds up so here we go So I guess the next step I'll do, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the connector on this new fuel pressure sensor and connect the old one to see if there's any change. All right, all right guys, believe it or not, it seems that we do have a faulty, brand new aftermarket fuel pressure sensor. As you can see, I've actually plugged the old pressure sensor to the harness connector and just with the key on engine off we're actually reading 0.94 volts which is 494 millivolts which is less which is pretty much half a volt pretty much close to 0.5 so that pretty much just verifies our problem it is a faulty fuel pressure sensor a brand new one aftermarket made from China it's causing these two codes, the P0087 and a P and a P0193. So I guess the next step is just to go ahead and plug the old pressure sensor back into the vehicle, put back everything. Or even before I even plug everything back, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the old sensor, put the old one back, and crank the engine and see if our voltage goes higher. Alright. Alright guys, so with the uh, old pressure sensor installed into the fuel rail, right now with the key on, engine off, it's still showing 0.495. So, so the next step is to go ahead and crank the engine over to build up pressure to see if this voltage goes higher than 0.4. So here we go. Alright guys, so uh, there you go. The uh, pressure did build up into the system to the fuel rail and it's showing about 1.7 volts, which is good. Indication that by replacing the fuel pressure rail, the fuel rail pressure sensor was the cause of these two codes, P0087 and the P0193. Alright guys, so hopefully you guys uh Enjoyed this video, learn something. This is pretty much Eli the OBD Tech. Subscribe if you like. Alright guys, so a little quick bonus video just based on scan data. As you can see, our fuel rail pressure absolute PSI shows about 800 PSI with key on engine off. So that just pretty much that confirms that we did fix the problem by replacing the faulty aftermarket fuel rail pressure sensor. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and start the engine real quick. So there you go, long term, still a little bit high. 
the short term should start correcting by going negative maybe I'll do a part two based on the heater circuit code we'll see you know I'm gonna go ahead and clear the codes you know, drive the vehicle and see if it comes back if it doesn't then the only problem was this P0087 and P0193 fuel rail pressure sensor problems as we know it was a faulty aftermarket fuel rail pressure sensor so there you go long term it's at 14 which is good short term is, is correcting so this number should go below 10 percent as short term starts correcting so you know, hopefully you guys enjoy this video this is Eli the OBD Tech subscribe if you like